Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Um, I want to talk about the topic of using uh, Linux, Ubuntu Linux at work, and especially if you freelance and you have clients who are, uh, like most people, not using Ubuntu or any type of Linux for that matter, uh, how you can make it work with them. Just a few tips. I've been using Linux full-time since 2008. Um, I got into Linux uh, when back when I was in high school many years ago. Um, I had a laptop and uh, back when laptops were, you know, these big chunky things like this. And uh, at some point it got the famous uh, BSOD, the blue screen of death. And uh, I was like, oh crap, because, you know, back in, back in high school, you're living on pocket money. I didn't have money to buy a new laptop or bring it to like some kind of fancy computer store. So uh, my best friend at the time, well, still, still good friends, but we don't live in the same country anymore. So we're... Uh, less close than we were but uh his brother was a big tech techie tech fan and uh he recommended that i try out linux so i was like all right so uh tell me how to do that so he gave me a usb stick uh probably back in those days maybe it was optical media maybe it was a disc probably and that was it it worked it saved my computer i just wiped off a of windows put on ubuntu and i was like 17 years old at the time i'm now 33 uh, give or take maybe a couple of years in my, in my calculations, but basically I've been using Linux since then. Now, during the course of that time, I've grown up, I've gone to college, I've uh, started working, I've been uh, moved over to freelancing, I've done a lot of, my, my life has evolved using Linux and Linux has gotten a lot better over the course of those years and user friendly. So it's actually only gotten easier, but nevertheless, there are a few things that I've kind of picked up over the course of that time. Now, so far, I've thankfully never have to never had to not use Ubuntu, Linux. Uh, I tried out different distros and then I just settled on Ubuntu. So I've actually been really lucky in that throughout my career, except almost my last uh, job it ended up not working out. It was with a cybersecurity company and they had a Mac only policy. So you could only use a work issued Mac computer. Um, and that was when I almost put that uh, position. Fortunately, in retrospect, didn't work out because I'm doing something I enjoy a lot more uh, currently. So just a few, just a few thoughts. And as you guys can see, I have my little notepad over here. I'm just going to firstly jot out a few thoughts for how one can uh, keep working in Linux. Now I'm not one of those people that I, I, I you know, I, I try to avoid being a Linux fanboy and saying Windows and Mac sucks. I just like using Linux because I think it's the best operating system, and I'm very comfortable with it. I still use Windows somewhat regularly. Uh, but I personally prefer it. So these are the ways. First thing, if you're doing freelancing, and this is just my rough notes, that's why you can see my notepad, um, try to use cloud tools as much as possible. So that's the number one thing. So I, for many years, uh, for the last five or six years, um, I've been offering freelance services to clients during full-time jobs, between full-time jobs, and, you know, um, Google Docs, the beauty and the reason I'm, I've become such a big fan of cloud everything. Now, some people are really anti Google and they don't like the cloud. And sometimes a lot of those people are Linux fans. So in the Venn diagram, there's a good amount of people in the middle. I'm not personally anti big tech for the most part, just because it's big tech or cloud. So I'm I love everything on the cloud, everything, everything SaaS, because it means that as a Linux user, my unusual operating system doesn't make a difference, right? If I'm collaborating with people using Google Docs, they can be using Mac or Windows, and we're all good because the software is sitting in the cloud. So um, I don't typically mention with, with clients that I use Linux, unless they're in the tech world, sometimes they're interested in that, and there's a reason they might want me to test a Linux tool. Um, but I usually just tell people my preferred, if we're, wor if we're working on marketing projects, uh, I, I love all the Google products, Google Slides, Google, Google Docs, you know, um, and increasingly I'm finding that people are, that's the default modus operandi for companies where I'm based here in Israel. Everyone's mostly a Google Doc shop, a Google Workspace shop. Uh, some people are, uh, you know, uh, bought into Microsoft 365 and, and that. Um, fortunately, they have cloud tools as well. Now, the second thing I want to jot out here is that try to avoid relying upon compatibility. Uh, between Linux tools and Windows tools. So like, that's why my default operating uh, procedure is to go for cloud tools. Technically, OpenOffice is supposed to work or be intercompatible with Microsoft Word. In my experience, it remains buggy and that goes across 
you know, uh, Libercalc, uh, Slides, it just tends still, they haven't ironed out all the creases yet in the sort of compatibility in my experience. So, you know, if, if, if you're making money, if you're, if you're, if you're um, you know, a professional, you're a professional freelancer, you don't want to be offering sloppy uh, work or creating complications for your clients. In that case, I would either try to use a cloud tool, if not, and I'll talk about what to do next. But I personally, over time, I've, I've stopped uh, this process of trying to work with um, Linux tools like OpenOffice, LibreOffice, anything in our ecosystem, unless it's the same software with cross-platform support. An example of that would be Audacity, right? They have uh, clients for Linux and for Windows, and I've had no trouble um, exchanging files between Winix, uh, Windows and Mac users um, and my Audacity because it's the same program. The files read, uh, read fine across the board. Um, three, two, tip three. I guess I should have given this a header. What, what kind of a writer am I? This is very sloppy work. Uh, how to avoid using, how to use Ubuntu at work during your career. Now, it, this might not be possible in some organizations. I've been lucky enough because I spent a lot of time working with tech startups and at tech startups that people were either amused by my use of Windows or the devs loved it. So they were like, they would, you know, they allowed me to like install my own um, Ubuntu, but you might be working for uh, a company that simply doesn't allow you to use um, Ubuntu um, or Linux. And that those definitely do exist. And if that's the case, then you're kind of SOL. Uh, so it really depends what type of company you're working for. That's why I enjoy working for and with tech companies because uh, tons of people, Personally, in Israel, where I'm based, when I go into work at a tech startup um, the last few years on a project basis, but I've often gone in and you pass over the dev room and like everyone's using Linux. You just recognize the Ubuntu wallpaper. So even though Linux isn't such a big thing in Israel, within certain bubbles, the tech bubbles, it's very much known. So you shouldn't have too much trouble with um, getting permission to use it at, at a job. But if you're working for a government agency, it might be written in you know in your contract that you have to use the workstation they set up with exactly the programs and in that case i'm really sorry if you're a linux fan um so the third thing but if, if you're doing freelancing or whatever i would say here's my recommendation here's what i personally do this is what i do i use um i have window vms as both bare metal and regular VMs. I don't know what the opposite of bare metal is, you know, actual virtualized uh, operating systems on the computer. Um, and, uh, and have a computer that can comfortably support virtualization. So the thing about using VMs is it does increase your RAM overhead quite significantly. And um, it also, but this, this is like the gold standard, right? I remember back in the day, I don't know if the Wine project is still really that active, but I remember using Wine when it was the only option and it was kind of sucky to be honest. So we've come a long way in a short period of time. And um, I personally use, you can use VMware or uh, what's the other one called? Uh, VirtualBox. I personally think VMware is a bit better. Um, now, uh, I was gonna say keep VM backups. You guys might know, anyone who's actually been following this YouTube channel knows I'm a, a huge sort of backup geek or uh, data protection geek. I'm always thinking about what can go wrong. Um, fortunately, that's the way my, my brain works. After too many years using Linux, I guess you expect stuff to sort of periodically crash and break down and destroy. So what I do, I've noticed that VMs can be a little bit buggy. So there's two ways around that. Firstly, because storage has become so cheap, I keep an actual uh, Windows um, um, an actual Windows partition on my, not just a partition, a drive, right, on my computer. So if I ever really need to go into Windows, I can do so uh, very easily. Um, but uh, because rebooting your computer involves a bit of effort, in the first instance, I try to just use a VM, and that works 99% of the time. Sometimes VMs do uh, break down for whatever reasons, so it's worth periodically backing up your Windows VM. So this really covers all basis, all basis I can think of for how you can work with Ubuntu. Firstly, work with Ubuntu. Try to use the cloud as much as possible because I'm a huge believer in the cloud. I think it's the future. I think everything is gonna eventually move, the software is gonna move from the edge to the cloud. Um, but because tech advances not overnight, Rome wasn't built in a day and all that good stuff, um, if you want to continue using Ubuntu with your clients, whether you work in-house or freelance, uh, you want to make it as easy as possible to 
work with Windows products. And there are certain, there are softwares that just don't exist in the window, in the Linux ecosystem. Obviously, stuff like Photoshop and video, we're talking about, um, DaVinci does exist in, in, in Linux, but it's, it's, it's pretty bad, uh, to be honest. Uh, you know, the whole Adobe suite basically is not, not Linux friendly. So if you're a creative and in that world, uh, what you can do is just keep um, an extra drive on your, uh, if you're using a desktop or if you're using a laptop, uh, you can simply install a VirtualBox or VMware, uh, install a Windows, uh, you don't need a license for, uh, if it's not customized, um, and just install a Windows virtual machine and just make sure to back it up periodically because um, it, uh, you can actually just use Clonezilla if you're using Ubuntu to back up your entire computer. This is another approach. It's, I call this the all-in-one backup approach and that will back up the VM because it's sitting on your, on your computer. So that's another way you can keep it backed up. And that should really give you absolutely every option because virtualization does uh, take up resources. Whether you're buying a laptop or a desktop, make sure you buy one with plenty of RAM and a decent CPU. And between all those permutations, as long as you work for an organization that does uh, not explicitly ban Linux or explicitly force users to use uh, non-Linux operating systems, you should have uh, zero problems. And that is a great thing because it wasn't always the case, but uh, tech has thankfully evolved. Ubuntu Linux distros have become easier to use. Uh, they're definitely quite understood in the tech world. And with a little bit of thought, you can totally set up your workstation for easy uh, inter, uh, you know, inter collaboration and intercompatibility with people running more common uh, operating systems, namely Windows and Mac. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.